questions. Today we will discuss cholera and vibrio cholerae. The points to be discussed are general characters of Vibrio, classification of Vibrio, pathogenesis of cholera, clinical manifestations of cholera, epidemiology of cholera, and prevention. Vibrio is a gram negative bacilli. So typically, it is coma shaped bacillus having a single flagellum. They are actively motile organism and their motility is described as a darting motility. They are oxidase positive. Their growth is enhanced in presence of a salt and they are typically seen in marine environments. The important species of Vibrio is Vibrio cholerae, which is responsible for the disease cholerae. Now we discuss about the classification which was proposed by Gardiner and Venkat Raman. The Vibrio species are classified into two groups. One is Vibrio cholerae and other is other Vibrio species. Vibrio cholerae is further divided into zero group or zero word based on O antigen. So they are O1, O139 and the third group is non O1 or O139. There are several Vibrio species included in this group. Now O1 Vibrio cholerae is further classified into two biotype group that is classical and LTOR. This classification is based on biochemical characteristic. Both these species, that is Vibrio cholerae O1 group, are further classified into three serotypes, that is Ogawa, Inaba, and Hikojima. Pathogenesis. Vibrio cholerae is responsible for the disease cholera and the route of transmission is oral fecal. The infective dose is pretty high that is 10 to the power 8 organisms. Gastric acidity is one of the barrier which prevents the development of cholera or inhibits the pathogenesis. But this organism has got certain factors which can counter the gastric acidity. One is motility and second certain enzymes which Vibrio cholerae possess. Another important factor is adhesion via pilus or cilia and this is also called as toxin co-regulated pilus. The most important pathogenetic factor is toxin. Vibrio cholerae produces cholera toxin and that is a type of enterotoxin. So now we discuss about cholera toxin. You can see over here the cholera toxin is typically AB model of toxin where A stands for active and B stands for binding. So there are two units which are there. With the help of B subunit, they bind with ganglionide receptor on intestinal cell. And once that binding happens, the active subunit goes inside the cell and then it binds with G protein. And this binding with the G protein leads to a changes in G protein and later on it activates adenylate cyclase. Activation of this adenylate cyclase leads to a long term production of cyclic AMP from ATP. So there is an excessive production of cyclic AMP which in turn leads to activation of protein kinase 
and this protein kinase activation leads to secretion of chloride ion. Now what happens over here along with that is that cyclic AMP and this protein kinase has got two effects. One over here you can see there is an active secretion of chlorine along with that is an inhibition of sodium uptake. So both of this will lead to sodium chloride accumulation in intestinal lumen which increases the osmotic balance or there is an imbalance which is created and to counter this osmotic imbalance there is a passage of water from the cell intestinal cells to the lumen which leads to the main clinical manifestation of cholera that is diarrhea so next is clinical manifestations the cholera in clinical manifestation ranges from asymptomatic to severe and fatal disease. The 75% of person infected are asymptomatic, while in 20% it will produce a mild diarrhea, while in 5% it can lead to cholera gravis that is severe and fatal complication. The incubation period is pretty short that is 24 to 48 hours and this would manifest it by a diarrhea. When we talk about diarrhea in cholera, it is painless, watery and voluminous. The stool of a patient suffering from cholera is watery along with the mucus flex which gives a typical appearance of rice water. Remember the dehydration which is happening because of this diarrhea is the terminal complication. Right? So water loss and electrolyte loss would lead to complication if not treated. You can see over here the patient over here in upper picture right so cholera is an acute diarrheal disease that can in matter of hours result in profound rapidly progressive dehydration and death if left untreated and with the treatment at least 99 percent would survive you can see in this both figure there is an excessive loss of the fluid and this is a severe diarrhea so dehydration is very important feature or a clinical sign which we need to look into. So dehydration can be categorized into three categories, mild, moderate and severe. The mild dehydration in which there is less than 5% of body weight loss which is manifested by thirst. The moderate 5 to 10% of body weight loss which is manifested by postural hypotension, weakness, tachycardia or decrease in skin texture. The severe dehydration over here that is more than 10% of body weight loss and the complications are hypovolemic shock, renal failure, unconsciousness. So if not treated, the patient would die. You can see over here in this figure a child lying on cholera bed showing typical signs of severe dehydration from cholera. The patient has shunken eyes, lethargic appearance, the poor skin turgor, but the moment you replenish the fluid either orally or intravenously, the patient would become all right. So the same patient within two hours after fluid therapy was sitting up alert and eating normally. Epidemiology. The cholera is a sporadic, endemic, epidemic and pandemic disease. Homeland of cholera 
was the delta region Ganga and Brahmaputra that is in India and Bangladesh. You can see over here the cholera can lead to pandemics and till now there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 pandemics which has been caused and which has originated from Bengal, India and the 7th pandemic was originated from Sulawesi, Indonesia. So till now world has suffered from 7 pandemics. If you look at the strain which is responsible for this pandemic, you can see over here the first six pandemic. It was caused by the classical strain of the Vibrio cholerae. And the seventh pandemic strain, as I said, it is caused by Eltor. The name has derived from Eltor quarantine station from where this species was isolated. So this strain has caused the seventh pandemic starting from 1960. But when this pandemic started and after some years you can see over here from 60 onwards 1990 and suddenly there was one more strain which was identified as O139. So it was not from O1 species Vibrio cholerae. This is another one that is O139. And it was assumed that this would lead to the eighth pandemic. But somehow the Eltor once again came back with wave 2 and wave 3. And once again it has now covered the whole world, limiting O139 to some endemic foci in India and Bangladesh. So currently in the world, the Eltor strain is prevalent and the seventh pandemic is ongoing. The prevention. Approximately there are 3 million cases and 1 lakh death. This is an estimation because this disease is very much underreported and the reported number is 2 lakh cases worldwide with 5000 death. The prevention is very important and the vaccine which is available is oral cholera vaccine. It is a kill whole cell Vibrio serogroup O1 and O139 vaccine. There is a single dose vial containing 1.5 ml of liquid vaccine which is to be taken orally. The vaccine has to be maintained in cold chain and it is recommended for all above one year of age. There are two doses to be taken and two weeks apart. It would give a protection up to three years and the efficacy of vaccine is 58 percentage. Thank you very much. Once again, in a part two, we'll have a look at laboratory diagnosis of cholera. Thank you very much.